What is up everyone and welcome back to the channel. I bet you guys were expecting the typical I want you to think for a moment about the French catacombs of Paris. Upon its discovery, what is thought to be a smaller secret soon reveals itself to be a twisting series of tunnels that go so far that no one knows how to get out from whence they came or how far it really goes. It has been secretly made beneath your feet while you were oblivious to such things for years, and now you can never think of that place that you once stood on in the same way. A gaming channel based around bland reactions is the last channel that you would think would be involved in serious drama. Usually it's the beauty community or the pet YouTuber community. No, seriously, it's worse than the beauty YouTube community. You will actually die of conniptions if you look that shit up. But the month of March 2019 proved to be an odd one in this regard for a certain bland reaction channel. One owned by someone named Susie Lou. This was only the start, however, as the evidence only kept mounting, and the twisting tale of her secret dramas came to light. At least, the ones we know about. Welcome to Wish for Death Island, Population Me, and today we are going to explore the catacombs. Also, if you're wondering what I'm doing, I'm just trying to figure out how to do one of those painting exercises. I'm trying to paint eyes and things without reference. It went like a disaster as usual, but I figured you'd still find it enjoyable to look at in a little way. This all began with a channel named Mark After Dark, belonging to one Mark English, who mainly does gaming and a lot of editing stuff. It's pretty impressive, his editing skills, and these skills were employed during a video about The Last Guardian VR, where he decided to use a clip of a YouTuber who was overreacting about this lackluster game as a tongue-in-cheek way to add to his own take on it. Unfortunately, the idiot overreacting that he decided to use the likeness of was one Susie Lou who he soon learned had an attitude towards the use of her likeness that would make her right at home in the lovely world of North Korea. Well, as long as she didn't try to steal their animated content. Now everyone knows by now that his clip was transformative and if you've seen it, you know the story, but I'm gonna play the side by side to show if you don't. From Nicholas Doria's video where he played them side by side specifically to demonstrate this. Oh, please don't tell me that's the end of it. No, I wanna spend the rest of my life like that. It feels so real. That's not fair. It's not fair. <laughs> That's made me cry because it was so amazing. Stop it. Get some help. Ugh. That's made me cry. Because it was so amazing. So, as you can see, there is so much editing done here that I think you would have to be a newborn baby or a literal corpse to not have the mental capacity to understand this. Yet, he got a strike for it. And he complained about it because why wouldn't you? It's an abuse of the system. She replies that she owns the copyright to her face and she can strike it down fully. But this is the start of the war that Susie Lou and her boyfriend decided to fight. Side note, why does this guy look like a fucking stock photo? Harold, show me some emotion! But mother, I don't know how. Why did you make me this way? Drama Channel started talking about this, as did everyone else, because abuse of the system is just one of those things that brings everyone together past the genres that divide. Like a bunch of happy little trees. You know, the trees that stormed Macbeth's castle to kill him. Anyway, Susie Lou started this Twitter campaign where her first tactic was to act like she didn't know why people were so mad because she was new to everything, despite the fact that she had been making content for a long time. 
saying things like thanks for giving so much attention to a noob, which is one of the dumbest things I've ever had to read. And you would think that she meant this was the first time that she's ever been in controversy, which I think would be fair because if that was the case, we all have something to figure out and it's jarring and disorienting. I think that I would definitely overstep some boundaries and not realize it if I was thrust into something like this. And sometimes it doesn't matter how big of a content creator you are because everyone has to experience something new and if you're in one corner of the internet and suddenly you're thrust into another, you're gonna not know some things. So if it was just this and she apologized, I would understand because I would see myself making the same mistake. But even then, she was just covering up all of the controversies that have been in her past and acting like she never had one, so it doesn't work this way either. This didn't help her and she ended up making a video on all of the hate channels using her content and the channel that she originally struck included in this all wrapped into one hater category she says things like he just zooms in and out a little and proclaims that this is not fair use actually took my section of the video at the end zoomed in a little bit zoomed out and put some closed captions on it now i have done so much research about this since monday and at no point has it fallen under fair use in my opinion it's not a massive deal. It is certainly not Suzulu is abusing anything. At the end of the day, someone re-uploaded my content. It was not fair use and it was taken down. If they believe it to be otherwise, they can deal with it themselves. Firstly, you've seen that this is not all of what he does. Secondly, even if it was just a 10 second clip of him slowly zooming in on your face as you overreact, it's still a comedic edit because he's using the zoom to point out how fucking dumb that is. And the title of the video could encapsulate this notion as well. It's part of the comedy and it could be transformative. She also claims that she researched the issue heavily and this is false. I think it's self-evident. But she further says that the only way the fair use can be properly determined is if a judge determines it themselves and it goes straight to court. Fair use is such a gray area. That's the thing. Like, fair use will only ever really be decided by a judge in court. Now, you obviously have to get to that point. It says on this official website in regards to copyright and fair use, if the copyright owner disagrees with your fair use, then it has to be resolved with a lawsuit, i.e. going to court and things like that. In my opinion, it's not a massive deal. It is certainly not Suzulu is abusing anything. At the end of the day, someone re-uploaded my content. It was not fair use and it was taken down. If they believe it to be otherwise, they can deal with it themselves. Then she goes on to repeatedly say that she deems it not fair use because she is the copyright holder of the original content and therefore can determine the use of the material. I don't see the judge's gavel anywhere near you. All I see is your forehead. All of this, even though a fucking five second Google search can tell you that the purpose of fair use also encapsulates criticism as a valid reason. Specifically because some companies or people don't want their shit critiqued and would try to control what people say about it. I would have thought that that's common knowledge. Another clip from a while back, 2016 actually, resurfaces of someone named Becky Boop, who had caught sight of Susie streaming what is essentially just wholesale BBC footage that she bootlegged for her channel. This is the type of stuff on YouTube that pisses me off. This is a live stream. This is a YouTuber doing that live stream. Now, do you see this YouTuber in this video? Or is this stream just pure theft of BBC content? This is pure mainstream media content just being streamed. Here, have a listen. There's no commentary or anything over this. It's pure theft of content just so that they can get views. Don't support people like this. This is no better than stealing something directly from someone's house or from a store. It's pure theft and it's bullshit. She shouldn't be able to do this and it had around 300 viewers and that's not something to scoff at for pirated content on this platform. In her response video, she claims she was just streaming because she was talking to her friends about the live coverage and wanted to talk to them all in one place. So she chose to live stream it herself so they could all talk in the live stream chat in one place and watch the same thing. So other things that people have dragged into this and we're going all the way back three years ago to when I wasn't even doing YouTube full time. I was sitting in the living room with my mom and dad and I was talking to my friends on the computer and um, everyone was talking about the election on our Skype group and it was kind of getting frustrating and we all wanted to just like talk somewhere else while watching it at the same time. So I was like, why don't I just like stream it and we can all just like talk in the chat. People are bringing this up in their hate videos because they're like, she specifically did this to try and grow on YouTube. 
Now I'm a gaming channel, so what the heck would I actually gain from doing BBC stuff? Now as an experienced YouTuber, she should know just about a bajillion other ways that this could be achieved, and she refused to acknowledge those ways. So let me, as a less experienced one, outline some of those bajillion ways just to be petty. Firstly, Watch Together or Rabbit can still be utilized even though they are kind of finicky. They allow you to watch something and pause it in a group of people and talk about it over a voice chat as well. Secondly, screen sharing from one person in a Discord call would also work. She has Discord, as we'll get to, so they could all talk there. Thirdly, it's live coverage, so they're all watching the same thing anyway. Just use a group chat without having to use the screen share because you'll be seeing the same thing. I think that that was what was happening anyway, so I don't see what the issue was. Fourth, I'm pretty sure you at least used to be able to have unlisted live streams going, so stream it but unlist it so you won't get any of those other views, and you can have the chat to yourself so it isn't clogged by random people like it was on the 300 viewer one, which kind of defeats the purpose of having a place to clearly talk to your friends and just your friends. The tweet from before about owning the copyright to her face was deleted by her, and she switched tactics from not knowing anything to suddenly knowing everything and being very confident in that fact, because she knows the copyright better than all of them. They're just kids, and if you don't understand copyright, you get struck. From laid back to aggressive. Then came the stream. Alright, then show your flag history. We don't need We need else. to see your flag history. <laughs> I don't care, I want to see your flag history. So this was getting to a point where a stream called the RFC stream was, was talking about this. And this stock footage looking ass, Stijo, decided to stop by and gloat in the chat. Eventually joining the call to gloat some more and make more excuses. Now, Stijo is just as bad as Susie because he not only defends the same practices, but also does them himself. So while it is good to have him there to talk, they really also needed to talk to Susie as well to have her address the things that uniquely really affected her. She was the one who started it, but she couldn't come on because she was collecting bolts, I mean walking the dog, for like an hour and a half of just walking the dog. So Stijo was answering the questions of the people on the stream while Susie did the pilgrimage to Mecca with her dog. Um, and the, I think <laughs> the Stijo, worst part- Stijo says, okay, gonna go walk the dog. You guys have fun. I'll be back in a bit. This is hilarious. Pussy! And just to make sure that, you know, you get, you guys are completely innocent of flagging tipster. Because I, I hope you understand why people are so, um, suspicious. Because of all the yeah, circumstantial I mean, like, evidence. I, I can understand yeah. people being suspicious, but at the end of the day, like I've already said, it falls to YouTube whether or not they bring down... Ch your, your, your girlfriend now has been, uh, flagging videos that have used clips of her, uh, edited clips of her footage. Yet she's, uh, been, you know, she makes, uh, reaction content to other content. Do you not see the hypocrisy there? So it all comes down to exactly what you want to define as fair use. Okay, so um, here's well, the thing. Okay. So you do. Uh, I, I've had Tipster straight up use, uh, clips from one of my interviews in one of his videos, but they were all edited, snipped down, and that was all fair use. Now, That's I could have been like, I... I could have been a cunt and reported it anyways and probably could have gotten it removed, but that's all based upon my my own feelings of the video that I re recorded. The Mark After Dark clip, the way I understand it is he took some funny clip of hers and like added it to his commentary on something else, correct? Yes. The, the, clip, right. the clip was standalone before his video. The clip was the entire first 27 seconds of his video. Okay. Yeah. And what was the but point of it? But he did edit it. He, he, took out, he took out some dead air and added some echo. That's right. There, there was a uh, lot. And some zoom ins and some other stuff. There was a lot of and audio in it. And it okay, was, yeah. yeah, so the, I mean, that's cut and dry. That's, that's just fair use. Once again, he says that Mark only zoomed in and out a little bit and did nothing else, so it was not fair use. And he refuses to acknowledge that this is a lie, even when called out to the point that it's just impossible to keep lying like that. He also says, and this is the repeated argument to this day, that the fact that the video was taken down once it was struck was the proof that it really was a violation, despite the fact that the site clearly says during the pandemic that videos will be taken down even if they're not meant to be because of the lack of human reviewing. It makes it sound like they believe that there's no such thing as false strikes. If you were to take a popular music track and cut out some dead air and add some reverb on music it, has, I think using music, music has completely is a little... different. Music has completely different laws than than uh, just like standard. That, that's a uh, false equivalency. 
music copyright has completely different laws to video copyright. I mean, Kim, you've already spoke to Susie, so you should already know what's happened with the Mark After Dark situation. And? And you would know that it was already, the strike has already been recalled and it's already come off as. Uh, then channel. what's the problem? Why is this still. We, we still need the flag history. I'm sorry. I, I, it's. it's. No, she no, no. She's out collecting boulders people. right now. We, she can't yeah, no, come she, here. And... She's, out, she's, she's walking the dog, dude. That dog is fucking. He needs water, bro. Bring the dog back. Now, right as I say that sentence, I suddenly coincidentally remembered that in 2015, Susie had a channel taken down by anime companies for reacting to uncut anime in the corner of her screen, and she claimed that this was a glitch once her channel was back up 24 hours later. Since apparently Susie had been previously terminated for copyright abuse back in 2015. From what I've been able to dig up, I believe she was claiming accounts had been impersonating major companies to remove her from the website. Her first mistake was watching Naruto instead of Jojo, but I can I can let this slide. This was because she got two strikes and decided that she should live stream for some reason. For some reason she could. And she ended up with a third strike because of this. And apparently all of these strikes were all mistakes or false strikes. And she also wanted to sue TV Tokyo, an anime company, because she claimed that the bot was striking her videos down and other YouTuber reactions down falsely. And she wanted to take them to court for the false reactions. Again, I suddenly remember this, I have no idea why, my train of thought is just really weird. So back on the stream, they get to talking about b-roll, which is basically background footage that can be extra footage of something you're recording or stock footage that you can just find online and use, or just secondary footage in general. For example, the primary footage of a let's play is you playing the game in real time because you yourself are experiencing this and that's what people are watching it for. However, as an introduction for a couple seconds to talk about the game, if you wanted to do that, you could play footage of different people playing it to just show the different aspects and the different playstyles and what the game has to offer. You could sort of make a collage of everyone else playing it, but that's only a secondary part of the video that shouldn't replace your own Let's Play footage. Using secondary footage is different with other people's things. For example, for a commentary, I'm using other people's footage, clearly, to talk about this, but for a Let's Play, it's specifically supposed to be yours. The topic came up because people pointed out that Susie often used footage from GameStop or other places running through the game themselves instead of her playing it. You said the Resident Evil 2 footage was B-roll. Explain to me how that qualifies as B-roll. Well, B-roll is footage that is sent to creators to be uploaded by the company. Right, but you understand what the intent of B-roll is to be used for, right? It's supposed to be in... It's yeah, it's supposed to supplement footage. your yeah. video. Yeah, some type of commentary or reaction, or there's supposed to be some kind of changes made to it. You don't just chop it up and, or you don't just like upload it in its entirety, just cut out the intro from GameSpot, upload it and call it a day. Like you understand that that's not how you use B-roll, right? Not necessarily. There's been plenty of times where I've been sent gameplay B-roll to be uploaded wholesale if I liked. Uh, do you have any proof of that? I've got dozens of emails that I could show you. Okay. Um, ex explain to me why GameSpot would be providing you with B-roll. It doesn't make any sense. The... Wouldn't it, be, yeah, it would be the company itself providing the B-roll. Yeah, yeah, I can understand, I can understand if Capcom said it to you, but we're talking yeah. about GameSpot, like a video GameSpot game journalism doesn't website. It. Doesn't, doesn't own that footage. They don't own those clips. They're literally taken directly from the game. What makes it transformative for them is the fact that they put their intro and their outro and they have signed documentation from Square Enix or Capcom saying the fact that they're allowed to use it. It's not the journalist companies that allow you to use it, it's the game companies themselves. They own the footage. Okay, so she did have one video where she up and altered in its entirety. And would you consider that fair use? You say you have a background as a lawyer. That's Is that fair use? No, that is 100% not fair use because neither was the uh, the gameplay is not Susie's and the actual performing of the game isn't Susie's so it can even be arguably fair use. I mean we're getting to the we're going to get into the mud about what fair use is especially when it revolves around let's plays but what you've actually got to realize is that permission and fair use are two completely different things if you're given something and then it's permissible use of that copyright you don't even need to care about but it's not GameSpot's copyright. Yeah, I, I don't understand why GameSpot would give you guys permission, but I mean, if you could prove that, that would be great. 
the the footage itself does not belong to GameSpot. The footage itself belongs to Capcom. Right. And did they give you permission to upload it entirely? Wait, 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 wait. Hold up. So you got permission from Capcom to upload this footage to your channel, but you're taking GameSpot's version of it? If you got permission, why wouldn't you use the footage that Capcom gave you? Dijo's excuse for this, that Susie also touched on in her video, was that it was B-roll that got sent to them specifically to use wholesale if they wished to in their own videos from these companies. He claims that he was sent B-roll as well to use in its entirety. Why would you primarily use B-roll footage for this? If this was a review I would completely understand, I've definitely been okay with and have used other people's footage when I couldn't get an ending or an easter egg that I needed to, so you just find like a non-commentary walkthrough and then you stick it in the description and you get the footage from that. But in a let's play, as I said before, it's specifically your footage of you playing. But Seijo does not understand this distinction in the differences of b-roll usage and content. He says that he's a lawyer, by the way. He also claimed that Tipster, a news channel, was blocked because he was blocked by both Stijo and Susie because he's friends with Becky and claims that Becky is some sort of nefarious Dio Brando-esque person. They had uh, very negative opinions of you on the stream. More specifically, it was Stijo. Stijo was on the call mm. and uh, he had this to say. So let me go ahead and bring this up and I'm going to play this clip for you. Um, here we go. <laughs> like that would be easier. Yeah. And that's the thing, that's the thing, Steve Joe. Like I've been trying to tell you and Susie, I got blocked almost right away, so I wasn't able to tell you. But I've been trying to say, like, I'm willing to tell your guys' side of the story, and this so, is not a good look in your in your guys' defense right now. You know why you got blocked straight away? Yeah, sure. Because of the it. it was because of the company that you keep. One of the first things that you said in one of your first videos was that you were talking to someone called Becky Boop. <laughs> Her name keeps appearing for the specific reason, but just hang on. But Sijo was basically trying to dodge all of the questions while Susie Lou was going across the desert hunting for sandworms and spice with her dog. He then says that the gameplay doesn't belong to GameStop. It belongs to the company who made the game, like Capcom, I guess. So you doing anime reactions that aren't even transformative definitely belong to the anime companies and you shouldn't be doing that? Is that what you mean? Susie finally goes on stream and sends in a screenshot of her flag history, despite them wanting a screen share because she can easily edit a screenshot and you can't scroll down. But a screenshot is what they got. It showed videos of the situation that look to be news coverage and commentary type looks at the situation, and these were all flagged for hateful content and harassment. Susie Lou then reveals that she rescinded the strike against Mark and sent him an email saying that she did not believe that this is fair use, but she will let it go, and he could have avoided all of this by doing a private call and emailing her in the first place. So I recently watched your live stream video where you talked about the copyright strike, even though you decided to fill it with direct insults towards both myself and Stijo, I'm going to reluctantly pass that off as just you being upset at the situation. From your stream, I understand your reasoning for the, using my clip, and while I still don't believe that it falls under fair use, I don't believe that it was used it for malicious reasons. As such, I've decided to retract the strike, something that I would uh, would have done willingly had you emailed me privately and had the conversation about it in the first place. Uh, I hope in future that you address this type of situation in a professional manner. You would be surprised how easily things can be resolved when approached correctly. All the best, Susie Lou Gaming. So nothing public. She would have rescinded the strike from the word go anyway if he had been the one to reach out to her. This is dumb. Firstly, I want you to remember the idea of private calls, because the woman who recorded the live stream content will have something to do with that later, but I'll just say for now that private calls only trap you into her trying to manipulate you in a private setting without a paper trail that the public can see of this happening. Secondly, we are all so used to publicly complaining about this because the strikes are usually from companies and things that wait, wait, we can't really talk to them because they're just such huge behemoths that won't actually talk to you about it, they want to silence you. So it's common practice to just tweet about it right now, that's the platform, that's the landscape. Keemstar, who was on the stream, also recalls that he DM'd her for a story and said that he might have to talk about it. She first sucked up to him for seemingly just because he was popular, I guess. And when he actually mentioned that this was the reason that he was DMing her, she suddenly got very cunty. She kind of, what he describes as soft blocked him, where she blocked him but he couldn't get access to the DM so he couldn't talk to her. One of the channels that was struck is Tipster, who I mentioned before as a news channel, and he didn't even get the option to appeal 
nor did it tell him what was happening. And a few other channels were covering her and they were also close to being shut down because of the amount of strikes. She seemed to have immunity and there wasn't a speculation of her having a contact at YouTube who had the power to grant her favor in terms of shutting down anyone she pointed at. And she continued this with her comments of having a contact or a partner or whatever. This is a thing, she's confirmed it herself. And that's why her channel came back despite the uncut anime reactions and the false strikes and all of the other things that would terminate a normal user. This results in a series of videos from other people, including ones that you've probably seen from Tipster, John Swan, and Nicholas Dorio, who had made the video where I first heard about Susie. But after this initial wave of drama coverage, the second wave happens. The second wave started with John's analysis of the drama and this was taken down by Susie. Now this wasn't the only inciting incident, this is just the one that I think had the most impact and the one that most people have talked about. It just seemed to be a major thing that kicked off everything to me. He made fun of her forehead in the same way that people make fun of Jackson's forehead. It's not really a malicious thing to me, it just seems to be funny. It's just jokes, comedy. And the jokes were paced out between the actual big chunks of commentary, so all they did was make the video funny funny, the thing that you wouldn't say about Susie's content, like her uncut reaction to the Lion King trailer. Funny. But she was suspiciously talking about flagging the day before, so when his video got taken down, suspicion went to her. When he tweeted about this, he got the limited staff tweet from YouTube after all of this, and she also went on to say that Tipster is known at YouTube for harassing people and being investigated, so she was clearly targeting him as well. And he was flagged for interviewing a lawyer about copyright that barely even mentioned her. She was just that scared about information going out about how she falsely striked people, I guess. She went on to tweet that everyone who was struck by her should just take it as a learning experience, and if your content doesn't violate terms of service, it doesn't go down. Not only that, but she even said that if she flags it, she's not the one censoring you, it's YouTube who is censoring you for taking it down. Okay. I guess the anime company is taking you down because of your abuse of content is just YouTube taking it down instead, it's not really them, so them preparing legal action against you is not bad. Use it as a learning experience. But this time, people dug up more stuff. Not only the channel shut down in 2015, but the McDonald's saga of 2017. See, minimum wage is still a hot tub debate around the world, with the issue of people not being paid for standard of living and whatnot. There was a strike at McDonald's for people to get a good wage there and to be able to provide for themselves and their families. A big issue of people getting by and falling into the poverty line. Something that would make someone look extremely malicious if they were to, say, comment that these people should shut up and get a real job, especially if the person commenting this is a YouTuber with a Patreon that other people fund so that they can film themselves being fucking lobotomized and catatonic while anime plays. She obviously got in hot water for this and got ratioed the fuck from this, so she compared herself to Donald Trump. And, uh, and Stijo also said that the effort that goes into YouTube sometimes is way more than a 9 to 5 job and people should see how much effort it really is. It's more effort than a retail worker. I get that you want to talk about effort for people who are underappreciated because I know that there is still a stigma in certain cases of people just talking in front of a camera and there are people, when you say effort, people come to mind for me are Ahoy, Jim Can't Swim or Tentacruel or something. But the reaction videos and Let's Plays most of the time, no. It's like when Foodie Booty says that her eating on camera has more effort than a 9 to 5 job. Like, wow, I keep blueballing people by mentioning Chantelle but never actually talking about her. <laughs> I'm sorry. So when I started looking into this, I was just watching other people talk about it first and then I was like, oh, it's not that big of a deal, but then people actually started digging up more stuff and I was like, holy shit. So I remember watching a Nicholas Diorio video about it and Susie had about 1800 patrons according to his screenshot at the time and this is where I'm getting it from where the only tier was five dollars and he calculated that about more than 8k almost 9k anime bootlegs on patreon none of her original content and she had a channel with Stijo for reactions as well as his channel and her channel so they had the patreon with 9k plus the revenue of the three channels of the same low effort and all of it's being regurgitated and that is insane. When people called her out after the second wave, she said that she just must be famous for this many people talking about her. Let me just add an in in front of that famous. And I guess that made it kind of funny when I started seeing like the usual suspects of the drama community getting all excited about it. And it's just funny to me because it really brings like all your haters out of the woodwork and you're just kind of sitting there like with your popcorn like, 
gonna be fine guys <laughs> so yeah i hope you guys feel at least a little bit stupid you know people like to spread rumors and people love to bang on like yeah well she said this in the past and she one time struck this guy but even though she took the strike off we hate her it's like you're boring mate you're boring so yeah i was well aware there's a lot of people like oh my god seriously people are doing videos on you and i'm just like am i this famous i must be i have to be this is what like james charles and all of them go through i honestly didn't think that any issues that i was having really warranted anyone caring that much especially like haters and stuff like that so thank you for making me feel so special and keep that in mind that this Patreon basically offered uncut anime at a cheaper price than streaming services. And going between streaming services, something like Crunchyroll might not have content that another streaming service has. So a lot of people who are kids who don't know how to pirate would see it as beneficial. And then there's the simps who just want to pay her. Hey, great news. Susie Lou got her channel back. She just uploaded today. And uh, yeah, so tipster, you lost. Susie Lou is back on YouTube, back on her channel. She's got her channel back. Yay. And I'm glad because you were, you falsely accused her of stealing content. But Susie kept doing her thing. And the thing that she flagged for specifically was hateful content, harassment, and dangerous acts. Despite the fact that, to me, the only dangerous act is her standing in an airport because her forehead could block the airspace for the planes taking off. Oh shit, I forgot to talk about the website. So when you look up her channel, you will not find her video announcing her website. However, if you go on the Wayback Machine, I'm pretty sure you can. Which I didn't even realize it was gone until I was about to look it up to get it to play it here. But it's fucking gone. This used to be her channel trailer of sorts. When you looked up her channel, you would just see it and it would autoplay. Basically, as this was happening, she knew that she would be in hot water for reacting to full anime, so she decided to make her own website to host these unedited videos so that YouTube wouldn't be able to take down her shit because she wasn't hosting it there anymore. Now, a lot of strikes and emails have occurred since then, and this is because of people contacting anime companies independently on their own, not through the YouTube system, and they were actually getting replies from people's legal team saying that this was actually being taken into account and this was being investigated. But Susie Lou denied every time someone would show them an email because she said that was just stock responses from these companies. As for the rest of it, because I, I don't want this video to like drag on and on and on, but the rumors are ridiculous. Susie Lou is being investigated by Google. It's literally not true. The person that was sending those emails was sending them to everyone. Like, we did some investigating our end because we have a contact at Google. It is not true. It's literally not even happening. At this point, people are so desperate to fabricate a story so that they can continue with the cancel culture. But it seemed that she has stopped saying this because actual strikes from third parties were coming into her channel. I think all of Stejo's content was taken down, which is only something that actual companies can apply for and do, specifically third party. It's something that you have to be either a really big YouTuber with your own network or something to do. So she claimed that this was a random troll, but you can't do that. That's not possible unless the company itself is the one trolling you because they have those resources at hand. Not everyone else does. I guess maybe she thought that it was just a troll who named themselves third party company and decided to strike her. I don't know if she's that stupid. Patreon, meanwhile, had done absolutely nothing to her before. But this had caused a lot of speculation that Patreon was about to get involved as well and con and be contacted by these companies too. There was even some media company found that was called like Remove My Media or something that looked like a third party service that would track property and IPs and find people using it. I'm not sure about that one exactly. I think tips are looking into it, but I remember seeing it somewhere. But people figured that Patreon was about to get geared up for this because gradually she started talking about making the transition to her website and not Patreon anymore. So you would be paying for her website instead of paying for the same content on her Patreon as an excuse for then yeeting the content and deleting all but like six reaction videos on her Patreon and her patrons weren't happy. In general, she would upload unedited reactions to her website and then hours later upload the uncut reactions for the full anime to Patreon, even though she should have done this the other way around as anyone would fucking realize and give priority to the people who are, you know, giving her money. But she does what she does. Anyway, the way she talks to her patrons is just really mean too. Let's check in again on the Patreon here. Uh, you get six videos now. And there is still anime uploaded 
on the Patreon. There is still anime. There is uh, six of them. Six anime episodes on her Patreon. And the other previous post about her updating, I believe, has been removed. Let's check. One, two, three, four, five... So yeah, it's been deleted. So the post that was uh, announcing all the move to her website, that's been deleted. So maybe she's gone down. She's back down on that, maybe. Maybe she's figured out how much the server costs were going to be. She was like, oh, no way. Again, these people are giving you money. I'm not saying that you have to agree to everything that they say, obviously, but you should at least be polite to them since they're going above and beyond to support you. She says things like, someone will comment about how this doesn't seem like a good move and then she'll just say, if that's all you took from this, I feel bad for you. Or just saying really snappy shit to them. Now with the Patreon cancelled, what do you get if you become a website member? A paid website member? Well, you get access to merchandise. No ads, because the website refuses to work with adblock on and it also was region blocked from Japan to prevent the companies from knocking. But lastly, that's about it. Most recently, her Patreon was actually deleted and shut down as well. So everything from her on that third wave was on the website. The last showdown. But unfortunately, that one got shut down too. Her website was reported as taken down like the Patreon video quite recently, like a couple days ago as the time of me talking right now. So she really is just being shut down like everyone warned her she would be. If you look at her channels, even though there are still videos there, a lot have been deleted. A lot, and she is losing subscribers every day. So the website is the, was the last stand, and with the legal mounting, she had decided to link an address that she would use as a lawyer to basically scare people away, claiming that she had a legal team when she didn't, and make it look more official. Only a Google search revealed that it was a PO box, misspelled, mind you, and the phone number linked to it was a mailbox, etc., which the quartering discovered once he gave it a call. <laughs> This is a mailboxes, etc. We're not we're not a law office. Uh, I'm I'm not sure what you what, what else you want me to tell you, man. Oh, sorry. Do you do you know who Susie Lou is? Cindy Lou Who from The Grinch. No, no. Sorry, sorry. My dog was hacking up something in the background. Sorry, sorry about that. He's uh he's an older. So they used a PO box instead of a lawyer. I don't want world class legal expert Miles Edgeworth to help me with this case. I want Postman Pat up in this bitch ass. Hell yeah. Meanwhile, Susie Lou's Discord was also being screenshotted and leaked, which made everyone even more angry. She was actively thinking everyone was secretly out to get her, so she would ban people or be rude to them if they were inactive. And the only people that were left were the mods in green, which the Joe is not. Which is proof that Susie Lou does not think highly of her cuck boyfriend, but he keeps at it anyway. Some call Steve Joe the male Susie Lou, but I don't agree because he would have to be considered a man to be the male Susie Lou, and I don't think so. I don't want to misgender the guy. But they specifically were going off at John Swan, even though so many other people had made videos by this point. They just kept returning to him even when he moved on to other topics. They would just call him a child and everyone who disagrees with what he said was a child, but then Susie said age is just a number. And you realize when you're older that age is just a number. Maybe I brought up the criminal psychology channel for a reason. But really, she was more triggered than I am when I hear a G note on a piano. After this, it gets crazier. Somehow it gets crazier. She had been found using a service that ignores DMCA from companies. So basically something like Cloudflare would, would not ignore DMCAs as like a safe legal thing. But these places don't do that because it's something that piracy sites can use where they can just transfer content without having to worry about that stuff. So she could keep hosting her anime. Even if it's not something that she's pretending to hide anymore, it's still piracy. Uh, what she's using, uh, I'm sorry, to see what host she's using, by looking at a subdomain. Unsurprisingly, Susie Lou is using a website host that ignores DMCAs. I don't know how more sketchy this can get. It's the same company that hosted 8chan. But also, a lot of actual harassment was being dug up as well. Not just after her tweeting gr at groups of people like the McDonald's workers. These were actual individuals who she was harassing. 
personally as well. I heard that one of her followers was pretty upset that I was criticizing her, but following this email, about 12 hours later, my web hosting account was actually hacked into, and the person that hacked into it charged nearly a thousand dollars, nine hundred and eighty-two dollars and ninety-six cents to be exact, in domains on the card I had on file. They continued to charge my card until the company actually locked my account since it appeared to them to be suspicious activity. Obviously, buying blocks of domains seems pretty pointless, but they could have been planning to buy them and if the web hosting company didn't actually lock my account, they may have transferred ownership of said domains. So the company did know that it was fraudulent, cancelled the domains, and issued refunds, but these bastards have made it so I am left with zero dollars for the weekend. And because of the shutdown, there actually is no live customer service at PayPal currently. Varadak is a YouTuber who was covering the story and someone who used a throwaway email was very interested in making her stop her videos. They emailed her threatening shit after hacking into her PayPal from her web post and trying to drain it of as much money as possible by buying domains and the like. There was another time after the food industry comments where she showed up in someone's livestream and they chewed her out for her comments, so she tweeted out the clip of her being chewed out, and the person DMCA'd the tweet, so Susie tweets out, You know when you DMCA something, it gives the person you struck your information, right? In a threatening manner. So once again, she was threatening someone with personal information. The biggest incident was Becky Boop, or Instagamer, there's a lot to this one. Years of stalking, harassing, and just generally terrible shit. So I'm going to try and summarize the bare bones things as much as possible, but the tipster interview is like two hours long, so just go watch it yourself, there's a lot of stuff. The very short version that I'm providing is when Becky was around a couple thousand and Susie was around 500 subs, Susie started being very rude in the comments. Becky brushed it off as a troll, but soon it got very personal and devolved into Susie calling Becky fat when Becky had to go to the hospital, attacking Becky for showing cleavage, for just having cleavage, not even showing cleavage, just having it, even though Susie herself apparently twerked on camera, even striking Becky's videos and using an email to strike them that contains the Boston bomber's uncle's name to send a message to Becky that they knew that she was living in Boston, just to freak her out, to threaten her. And the private calls, I think you'll recall that I mentioned ages ago her trying to get Mark to get into a private call. Well, with Becky, Susie would often be a completely different person in these calls, very sweet and very easily manipulating. Becky into apologizing, even though Susie was the one doing the wrong and needed to apologize. People who have been manipulated often apologize way too much for things idly as well, just like, oh sorry or whatever, way too much than usual because they're used to being made into feeling like everything they do is wrong, while they're the ones who are being harassed and manipulated by that person. Which makes Susie's response to Becky coming forward with her story a lot creepier, since Susie just screenshotted and tweeted out one of Becky's attempts to apologize from the past and said if you're in the wrong, you wouldn't apologize. So she really did do something wrong because otherwise she wouldn't be apologizing. Which is way too close to victim shaming than it should be. Hey, at Becky Boop, remember when you emailed me last year saying you wanted to bury everything and move on? Now suddenly when Susie Lou is trending, you jump on it for clout so much much for moving on a eh? next rumor to squash please so again like i said she seems to think that like this was a slam dunk on her part like she totally debunked everything that becky boop had to say in that interview i lost track of how many skype calls we had together to try and have a friendship but ultimately it went nowhere i've had nothing to do with her for years and would like to continue to have nothing to do with her thank you this shows that she was not being harassed by me because you don't apologize to harass her, do you? We had many arguments in the past, but it was not one-sided. We both hated each other and we were both active at that. I have to- So Becky left YouTube in general and only came back right now because everyone would finally see what Becky has been going through for years. This is so crazy to me. It personally to me because I remember seeing her in the comment section of a lot of RPG Minx's videos I would always read her comments and I never knew that she made content but I would always see that name everywhere then I would just stop seeing her name and I was like hey where did that commenter go I guess they didn't have time anymore like a lot of you who have watched RPG Minx's old videos and things would know about like the commenter the Horned King and stuff like we'd see a lot of those comments around and then so suddenly have these names come back it's just it's crazy because it's just it's like three years later and suddenly I'm seeing this again 
in a completely different way and I had no idea what was going on the entire time. It's really weird. I don't know, sorry, that's just like a personal thing for me, but wow. Becky also brought up Susie buying subs, which Becky suspected because the view count never matched the sub growth. The view count would always be lower than the sub growth. It just made no sense to her. Like, Susie's subs would shoot up one day and then slow to a crawl afterwards. That's suspicious. Plus, her contacted YouTube gave her an unfair boost that got her into YouTube Rewind despite only having 300,000 subscribers. Don't get me wrong, I don't fucking know any of the people in Rewind as it is, but that's millions of subscriber channels and Susie is just there too. Especially since they keep sub snubbing the edgy channels and just boosting these ones, it's just, it's so dumb. In the end, I hope Becky is feeling satisfied with the vindication and much more vindication that will come as Susie gets her comeuppance. Because Becky is understandably emotional after years of this and it's nice to see some positive stuff. Go subscribe to her. She is not doing regular content, but she is going to be talking about stuff that interests her, like divination as someone who doesn't believe in that stuff, I'm still interested in it and it sounds fun. And now we get to the now. The now now, if you will. What do? Well, we wait for Susie to either get shut down by her channels completely because she still believes that she's in the right now, even after everything but her channels have gotten shut down. And once that happens, it's either one of two things. One is that she'll leave and we'll never hear from her again. Or two, she'll get shut down but she'll keep coming back with new channels and those channels will only get like a couple hundred views, as is the case with a lot of people like this, and it will never go anywhere. Or she'll never go away. I don't know. Which one? Which one do you think is more likely? I guess it depends on the person. To end, I have one thing that I want to comment on specifically, and I think that this is important. While this has been happening, everyone has been using the phrase, you could have entered this here, Susie, or you could have stopped this from getting to this point, Susie. And it just kind of hit me. Because if you put aside Becky's story, like it, when we didn't know about it at the time, it just started off as someone who was in too deep and didn't understand why. And I honestly, if I had just seen that, I was ready to kind of defend her, honestly. I would have thought that she was really just making a mistake because she didn't understand. And I can see myself in that situation so much as someone who has had issues with like, just not really understanding that sort of stuff as well. It, it's more common than you'd think. and. I would at least would have liked to be a kind voice see saying to her that she would have regretted this later and it I would have thought that she really was just making a big mistake because she didn't understand and that she would learn to regret it later as all of us do. Because the one thing that we can all relate to is mistakes. Furthermore, someone might see this solution as obvious, like you obviously don't copyright strike this person. And that's because they're on the other side of the issue. We're all on the other side of the issue where we see what it is. But we tend to forget that not everyone gets this obviousness because they haven't had a chance to understand it through experience. It only seems obvious that you should have done this afterwards. That's how mistakes kind of happen, so if she really had just rescinded the strike quickly and realized it, I wouldn't have had a problem with this and I would have just thought it would, would should be dropped, you know? That's one of the reasons why I wait so long to talk about people first, to wait for the drama to end, because I can see myself just realizing what's happening and then going, oh shit, it is my fault, and then apologizing. And if that happens to someone that I'm talking about, I'll just either try and see it from their perspective or just drop it entirely. And I think that's another reason as well. Like, I can so easily see myself being oblivious and not understanding the shit until I experienced it. For those who don't know, I used to talk about anti-SGW stuff before this channel, and because of the situations in my life, I have always been way too defensive, I think. Which I think carried over to early content that I made, and I always felt way angrier about the things than I would have now. If I had started that stuff now, I think I would have been a lot more calm. And being in better circumstances as I am now, there's a lot of stuff with the level of frustration and defensiveness that clogs your vision, and you don't see what you're doing as like stupid until afterwards. So any arguments that I would have had, for instance, for now, I probably would have seen their perspective on it a bit easier. That seems obvious to me now, but after that whole burnout and everything, that perspective really wasn't there for me at the time. So I can so easily see other people making those same mistakes, and I think that it's very easy to fall into like a nitpicking thing where we're all just like, you should have done this, and I can't see why you couldn't see that for some instances, when really, it's just a mistake. But having that little thing just isolated and thinking that that's all there is to it, I could have seen a way to defend her if she had just let it drop and apologized. So you could have ended this here, Susie Lou, is such a big statement here. And in this sense, it's also something that I very much disagree with, even though I just talked about how I agreed with it, because it went past the point of no return in a sense that Susie herself can't stop. It's really just sad to me. And what I mean by that is it just shows 
how she never changed and she never had that they would think where she was like, hey, maybe I shouldn't be this way. And then she like, hey, maybe I should look at the other side of this. And she never changed. And that's very sad to me too. I can't defend that. Because if we take into account the story with Becky and everyone else who Susie has harassed, it really does show that she isn't going to change. And as much as I would want to extend my own f feelings and my, old f and my own faults and my own experiences with trying to acknowledge my flaws and try to relate to her on that level, all of this coming out just- it, it makes me feel like I can't do that, in a way. So that's why I bring up the catacombs again. Once again, one thing spirals into another and soon it is so vast that it is unrecognizable and then what? No one knows. It is as much an anomaly as any other downward spiral internet shenanigans, but it is the story of Susie Lou. Updates will come if needed, as with my Amberlynn Reed updates, as long as it's substantial I will do an update. But thank you for coming with me on this wild ride once again, and thank you for sitting through my moral fagging, <laughs> just as you have. But I have been thinking about doing the same deep dives for true crime and other weird cases once in a while in between all of the internet stuff and the reviews. Stuff like Elizabeth Holmes or lesser known crimes, like lesser known versions of the Chris Watts of the world and whatnot. I wanted to do that when I made anti-SJW content as well, but I never had the time so I I'd never delivered, but I'm getting everything back into the swing of things, so I'm just gonna get back into what I never came through with. But anyway, get the fuck off my island. Bye. <laughs>